know that there is math in the Bible? Now, I'm not talking about two plus two equals four or pi times the diameter equals the circumference of a circle. We'll leave those equations to the math books. I'm talking about the math where you and I are terms of the equation. For example, you plus demons equals what? Torment, sin, anything negative. But what if we added a new term to that equation? You plus demons plus Jesus equals what? Healing. Add Jesus to any life equation and I guarantee you'll love the results. Then they arrived at the region of Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped out on shore, a man from the city who had demons met him. For a long time, he had not worn any clothes. And he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him shouting, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demons into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He responded, Legion, for many, demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them into the abyss. Now, there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd stampeded down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they became frightened. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then the whole throng of people of the surrounding region of the Gerasenes begged Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So, the man went throughout the city proclaiming how much Jesus had done for him. In Luke 8, 26 through 39, we encounter a situation where Jesus has been added into the equation. Before Jesus is plugged into the calculations, a man has been possessed by demons for a long time. 
he is isolated from society. He lives in the cemetery. He is naked, vulnerable. He has thousands of demons raging inside of him. They have taken over his identity and his mind. When he opens his mouth to speak, it is not him who speaks. It is the demons. I can only imagine how often the man has tried to fight these demons with his own strength, yet found himself failing over and over again. 6,000 demons is too much for one man to fight. But who else will fight with him? The only people who get close to him are the guards that come to restrain him between his explosive episodes. This man seems to have been living in a hopeless situation. Scholars say, that this man might as well have been dead. Many of us can relate to this man. There are demons, sins, and negative thoughts that plague us periodically. We try to fight them with our own strength. We fight alone and we lose every time. Will we ever heal from that breakup? Will we ever stop hurting others with our words? Will those voices that keep telling us that we are not good enough ever shut up? <sighs> when we begin to ask these kinds of questions, something is missing from our equation. It is at this point in the man's story that Jesus enters the equation. Did you know that Jesus wants to enter your equation? Earlier in verse 22, Jesus and his disciples get on a boat intending to get to the opposite side of the lake. Now, the Bible says opposite for more reasons than just geographic location. Gerasa was a predominantly Gentile region that Jews would have avoided. Gentiles did not follow Jewish laws. They were not God's chosen people. So they did many things that contradicted the Torah. The Jews certainly would not have been near the tombs because they would have risked being deemed unclean and having to go through a seven day cleansing ritual. On top of that, pigs were considered unlawful for Jews to eat. Seeing 2000 pigs on a hillside, as Mark tells it, would have been a major turn off to them. And the Roman occupation of Gerasa certainly would have reminded them of their traumas from a lifetime of oppression from other groups. This was not an ideal place for any Jew. Yet, Jesus and his disciples, who are Jews, sail to this non-Jewish territory to meet this non-Jewish man risking being deemed dirty, risking being excommunicated from the Jewish community. Here, we see the foreshadowing of Jesus offering himself to the marginalized and the least of society. Jesus is for everyone. Jesus wants to be a part of our equation so bad that he is not afraid of our dirtiness even though he is divinely clean, he steps onto the shore of our filth, ready to encounter our demons. Now, speaking of demons, during the time of this story, it was popular to believe that you could dominate a person just by knowing their name. In the first century, names expressed the totality of a person's being. Maybe that's why the demons called Jesus son of the most high God. Maybe they were trying to steer him away from sending them into their final judgment place by calling him a name he deserved. Now, if this is true, then Jesus overturns them by asking their name. 
If this name domination demonology is true, then it makes sense that they answer Jesus with a number and not their actual name. They think they slick. Nevertheless, they recognize that Jesus has ultimate power. That's why we need to add him to our equations. Our demons, sins, and negative thoughts might overpower us, but they tremble in Jesus' presence. Those chains they put on that man could not hold the demons, but Jesus' presence alone is enough to make a demon behave. Now, when the demons request to be sent into the pigs, Jesus grants it, and the pigs stampede to their deaths into the lake. From this point on, what happens to the demons is irrelevant. Luke wants us to zoom in on the fact that the man had been healed. <laughs> Typical doctor language. Because Jesus has entered the man's equation, his life does a full 180 degree turn. He used to be the man who had demons. Now, he is the man from whom the demons have gone out. He used to be naked. Now he is clothed. He used to be controlled by the demons. Now he has a right mind that can control itself. He used to run into the wilderness as the demon's vessel. Now he is sitting at Jesus' feet as his disciple. He used to live in the tombs. Now he lives in his home again. He used to be isolated from society. Now he can re-enter community. He used to be considered a dead man with no purpose. Now he is commissioned to his city by Jesus himself. When Jesus enters our equations, he immures the demons implants healing, and impels us forward. I don't want to go through life putting in the same calculations and getting the same results. I want to call these demons by name and introduce them to the name that is above every name. Bye-bye, anxiety. Here comes Jesus. So long, manipulation. <laughs> there goes my Jesus. A sayonara, insecurities. Jesus is five minutes away. Toodles, fornication, Jesus just got out the boat. It is the name of Jesus that cancels out every demon. Maybe you are someone who has been trying to solve your equation, but the results have been unsatisfactory. I suggest you add Jesus. Long ago, Jesus, son of the most high, came down to earth to take on the sins of the world and liberate us from the strongholds with which Satan bound us. He sacrificed himself for us in one of the most embarrassing and offensive deaths a person could die, death on a cross. We all deserved that death, but Jesus took our place. He died was buried, and in three days he rose from the dead. Those of us who believe in him are able to reconcile with our Heavenly Father and spend eternity in heaven with him. If you want to add Jesus to your equation, say this prayer with me. Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to be the perfect addition to my life's equation. Thank you that Jesus came down and died on the cross for my sins so that I would not be tied to the demons that try to use me as their vessel. Lord, thank you that you want a relationship with me. Lord, I believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world, and I cannot wait 
to spend eternity in relationship with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, woo your equation just became complete, all right? The math is mathing today in your life. And I am so happy for you. Please let us know. Put it in the comments. Put it in the chat. If you accepted Jesus for the first time or anything regarding this word for the journey. The purpose of the word for the journey is for you to have some encouragement, some lessons as you journey through your life. So I hope this was encouraging to everybody. And hey, let's let the math math and keep Jesus in the equation. Toodles!